So I'm recording now, uh, and we'll start off with uh, the four steps on the first one. And the first one is checking and make sure that the machine itself uh, is all set up correctly and there's nothing loose, nothing's broken, and everything else. Oh, yeah. um, so the first thing you can do is check all of the plugs for the motors and end stop switches. So um, those, I'm going to switch my camera here. So those are like the plugs over here. And make sure that all of these are all plugged in correctly. Okay. So do you have the printer there in front of you? Uh, actually, uh, could you give me like a minute? Because it's right there and this yeah, computer, yeah. I can't really move it. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, and we check this just to make sure that um, if it gets moved around or uh, parts get loose, sometimes the, uh, the cores can just come loose over time, which could also be why it could be printing weird um, for your model as well. Yeah, if you want, you can move it closer to the camera because we'll be uh, we'll be working on it today. So, okay, I got it now. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. We got plenty of time. Awesome. Okay, it's so. awesome. So go ahead and check the plugs down here and make sure all the plugs are plugged in. So like the Z and the Z switch right here and the X and the X switch. Okay. Make sure those are plugged in. And then the E motor right here and then the Y motor and the Y switch over here. Okay. And just check them all. Does it look good? Yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that nothing is wobbly or knocked loose. So this uh, carriage that has the extruder on it, it should only move to the left and the right. It shouldn't rock back and forth at all. So if you grab onto it, it shouldn't rock like this. Okay, yeah. Good? good okay, yeah. awesome. And then next with this, we're gonna go ahead and grab this surface too, and then try to shake this. And this should not rock back and forth either. It should only move side to side. Okay. okay. And do you have tape on there? Or do you have a lock build service? I do, yeah, I do have tape because I didn't want to scratch it actually. Oh, okay, so it's made to be scratched up. See how dinged up mine is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so well, you can totally take the tape off. Okay. So you, uh, you can print with tape um, and tape works well. Uh, um, as a print surface because it's got a lot of friction on it, but these surfaces, it's actually specially designed to replace the tape. So it's actually more porous and it sticks better um, than tape does. And one of the, the upsides to it is it doesn't rip all the time and you save a lot of tape and save a lot of money because one of these are a lot cheaper and it lasts probably three or four rolls of tape wood. Um, and then the, uh, one of the downsides though is if it's too close, it can actually cement the models to the surface. And there's a, there's a way that we'll go over that here in a little bit to get it off. But the easiest is to just loosen each one of the bolts all the way around and then print the first couple layers again and then peel off those parts that get stuck. And you can clean this surface too by um, scraping it clean with the scraper or by using a little bit of like 90% alcohol or a little acetone on a rag and rubbing it, rubbing it down and stuff like that. That's how you can get all that. Surface. Okay. I'm about not sorry. Yeah, it's fine. I was printing once and I scratched the wheel and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it can get really tore up. You should see some of the ones that we have here in the shop that we still print on. So. <laughs> 
Yeah, they're made to take some damage. <laughs> so, and do you have, is it stuck right to the glass? There you go. Okay, yeah, not right now. Okay. Yeah, then you'll need the, the clips. Yeah, there you go. To make sure it stays on there. I have two more right there. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. I was trying to fix it in my computer, but it didn't connect with the internet in here, so that's why I'm kind of. Yeah, and then that one on that corner, make sure you have it a little bit in because this is the corner that the nozzle is going to go to. So you okay. don't want the nozzle to bump into it. So just like pull it a little bit to the inside. Okay. All right, awesome. So now that we've got uh, the machine, it looks like it's going good. So we don't have to worry about it. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to check is we're going to make sure that this doesn't rock back and forth and it's not loose too. So you should grab onto this right here. And then make sure it doesn't rock around. Okay. Sounds good. Pretty tight? Okay, great. So now uh, we are going to check our settings on Cura. So do you have the computer that has Cura installed on it? I do, but it's all the way over there. So. Okay. Yeah, we can do it on your laptop too. That's fine. It just, I can't really connect it with the internet in here. I don't know why. Well, do you have Cura on your laptop? I don't actually. Okay. Um, you can use the SD card and you can install it if you want. Okay. If you have the little like dongle um, that came with your printer. I, I should have it over there. Then it's got Cura on there and then I'll walk you through it and you can have, make sure you have all the correct settings. Cause that's the second big troubleshooting step is to make sure that it has all the correct Cura settings. Okay. And then inside the SD card, you should find a folder called Cura. Oh. Mm -hmm. C-U-R-A. It's not recognizing the. It's not recognizing the um, US, the flash card for some reason. I don't know, try taking it out and put it back in. That's weird because it's done it before. Yeah, make sure that it's pushed all the way into the dongle. Like make sure that the SD card right here is pushed all the way in. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes it can be like a little bit loose, especially on the on, on like one of the blue or pink ones. You have one of those? Uh, we have the black one. Okay. Did that work? Nope, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, well, I can show you the settings, and you can kind of go back and forth between that other computer if you want to make okay. sure it's correct. Okay, I guess that'll work. Um, so I'll share my screen with you, and uh, and I'll have Cura opened up here. So go ahead and wait for Cura to open. All right, so here's Cura, and we want to make sure it has the correct settings for this printer. So I'll go ahead and start from the beginning, um, and then you can go and watch this video, because I'm going to send you a recording of this video, so you can watch it um, okay. and make sure that you have all the correct settings okay. um, when you install yours. So you're going to go machine and then add new machine to install it, or when you first install Cura, this is the first window that you're going to see. 
and then you'll click next and it's going to be an other type of printer because uh, okay. it's technically a RepRap printer because that's what the type of software that it has. And then we'll click next. And then Mendel is the operating system, M-E-N-D-E-L. Yeah, okay. And then we'll click next. And then Cure's ready to use, woo! And then we hit finish. And then we have to set these settings up and the size of our printer up. So the first is the layer height. And that is how tall each one of the layers are. So the highest quality that you can do is a 0 0.1, which is a tenth of a millimeter for each layer. And that's gonna look really nice. And then the lowest is 0 0.3, so it's gonna be a lot thicker and it's gonna print a lot faster, but it's not gonna look as good. Okay. Um, we print most of our stuff at 0 0.2. And then the shell thickness is 0 0.8. Oops. 0 0.8, there we go, not slash eight. Uh, and the shell is the thickness of the outside part of your model. So two shells are two thicknesses of the model. So okay. if you want to increase the thickness and make a stronger model, you'll just keep adding 0 0.4. So it has to be a multiple of four to make the outside stronger. Okay. Gotcha. And then the bottom and top thickness, we'll go ahead and keep that about the same as the shell thickness. And the fill density is going to be 20%. Um, but you can set it to whatever you want. So zero would be hollow, 100 would be solid, but normally five to 20% is, uh, is a good density. The speed, we're gonna leave at 50, and you can print slower than 50 and make it look nicer. Um, but if you print too much faster than 50, it can cause issues with the printing because it'll try to print way too fast on the layers. And as it's trying to lay one layer down and move to the next one, it can actually peel it up because the first layer didn't fuse properly. So this can print uh, like 120 millimeters a second, but it doesn't print very accurately at that. Um, and like most 3D printers can't print that quickly. So um, nearly any 3D printer, uh, for all these types of materials, 3D printers, we always recommend um, 50 millimeters a second. So you can do that on your other 3D printers that you guys have as well. Okay. Probably that was the problem with the model I was trying to print because it was too fast, I didn't check that. Yeah, that might've been that, um, for sure. And then the temperature will go to 220. And that's what it's gonna melt the PLA at. And this can only print in PLA, it can't print with ABS. Um, so that could also be a problem because ABS doesn't stick very well um, on, because this bed can't get as hot as it needs to be for ABS prints. Um, so any PLA or PLA composite can print with this printer, um, but it, because it can only get up to 50 degrees as a bed temperature. So that's the maximum bed temp. And then support type, we'll go ahead and click everywhere. So if it ever needs supports, it will automatically generate it. Um, but you can turn that off if your model doesn't need supports, that's totally fine too. And the platform adhesion type, that's what will help things to stick. So if you're having problems with stuff getting knocked off or like warping up on the sides, it might be a leveling issue. But if it's really big, you can also turn the brim on and that will work like suction cups around the outside of your model. And those lines, uh, that will go around the outside of the model will help to keep it down so it won't be able to warp up and bend up. Okay. And then the diameter of the filament is 1.75, and it says that on the side of all the filament. It says it right there. 1.75. Okay. And then the nozzle size, the last thing we're going to change is this 0 0.5 to 0 0.4. And that's where you see this went back to clear. It wasn't yellow anymore because it was at 0 0.5, it's yellow, and that means I uh, might not be able to print it. Um, and that's what yellow means. So we do the nozzle size is 0.4. And then the machine, uh, if you click on machine and then you go to machine settings, that's where we're gonna set the size of our build area. And that's what this is right here. So this right here is gonna be 300 by 300 by 400. And this is also on the user manual. It'll walk you through all these steps. And there's also a screenshot on the uh, SD card too that has all this. But if you wanna take a picture of this with your phone too, these are all the settings that Cura will need. So if you wanna take a snapshot of it, then you'll see these are all of the standard settings that Cura will be set up with. Because that's what I do a lot when I'm setting up new printers and I'll take a picture of it so I can easily go back and reference it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got this one. Awesome, and then we'll click okay. And then now we have Cura completely set up like it needs to be. And just like uh, you would load your other model, so if you're loading your model from Thingiverse or one that you made an inventor or something like that, um, you'll just click on it. And then we got like this stag beetle right here, for instance. And then I'll hit open. Uh -huh. 
And then print orientation is also a big part of this. So I can zoom in and out by using the scroll wheel. And this gray means it's too large to print. So I'm going to go ahead and click scale. And then I'm going to click to max. And then it'll be maximum size. OK. So with this beetle, too, we want to think about the ways that it's going to print the best. Um, so these feet and stuff will probably have supports and things underneath them. But if you wanted to, you could rotate it and flip it over. So it would print like this. OK. So that, okay. And then you could print it with the supports would be underneath it. And that's why we have the support everywhere checked right here. So if it okay. needed supports, it will automatically generate them. Awesome. Okay. And then here is the slice. So that's when it's actually coding the model for the printer. And then when that gets done, that's what you save on the SD card. And then the print. And then you can also scale your model as well. So if you wanted to change it, one is 100%. So if you wanted to change it all the way down to like 0.5%, or you can see like this one is even less than that, um, then you can change all the different scales of your model if you're not worried about the exact size of it. So this guy's going to take 10 hours and two minutes. And you can even see on the view mode and go into layers what each individual layer is going to print like. And you can see this turquoise, that's the support structure that's going to print underneath it. Okay. Can you take all the support structure after you've done that? Yes. So that's what you would use like the clippers for okay. uh, and the pliers to be able to, to pop all the supports off. Okay. But this is a pretty difficult model to, uh, to print with the supports. Like I have one actually that I, uh, that I printed. So it has quite a few supports on it that I'm going to have to go in and cut out. But I just have to print them down like this so we'd be like smoother on the top. But that's, that's just part of it is going in and like popping the supports off. Okay. So then now that we have our model ready, then we put our SD card in the printer or, or in the computer, excuse me. And then we save it to the SD card. So it has to be saved as this G code file. So um, we'll click save toolpath right here. And then we can go to our SD card and then save it on our SD card and name it whatever we want. So. Okay. So we put our beetle on there, and then now it's saved to it. And then that is what we would eject. And then we would put that in the printer. And then from the control screen on the printer, we would print it. OK. So do you have any questions about Cura or what Cura looks like? Uh, not really, no. OK, awesome. Yeah. So that's the. Uh, that's the digital problems that might happen um, with that. And some of the most common issues um, with Cura and, uh, and digital issues are it printing way too fast can be a problem. Printing without supports if it needs supports so it can like get knocked loose um, or kind of not turn out like you want it to, like look really droopy or something like that, or not printing the, the parts like you want it to be. Um, or print orientation, actually, where you want to try to get the flattest part of the model flat on the build surface itself. Um, and all those have to do with like digital problems and digital issues. Um, and the model itself can also be kind of be a part of that. So you want to make sure that you have a good STL model. Um, and if you want to try to fix a model and you think there might be something wrong, Mesh Mixer is a great program to use to download a model into to work on and, and fix it. Okay. And it's totally free. Um, so once you have your file and you're all good to go, um, then the last two troubleshooting steps have to do with the printer making sure that the filament is fully loaded. Um, and everything is flowing through correctly. So um, I'm sure you've loaded the filament before and you got to make sure that it's heated up um, to push the filament through. Have you unloaded the filament and gone through those steps? Uh, yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so the preheat soft pull, um, have you used that or did you see what that was? Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw it in there. Okay. So the, the soft pull means that it heats up to 100 degrees and then it pulls, you pull the filament out when it gets to 100. And that's like changing the oil in a car. So it just keeps the, the maintenance of the printer uh, running really smoothly. Because if you pull it out at a semi-solid state, it'll pull out all the filament that's in the nozzle and help keep it clear and keep it clean. So that'll cut way down on clogs if every time you swap the filament, you pull it out when it gets to 100 degrees by doing that heat soft pull. Um, and that will just help with the maintenance of your printer. And you can also, like if, uh, if you're having problems with a clog or something like that, you can do the regular pre pla and like force the filament through. Um, and then go ahead and turn it off and let it cool down for like 15 minutes. And then uh, turn it back on and then do the soft pull and then pull it back out. And by doing that, like pushing, pushing through and then pulling out like back and forth a couple times, that will normally solve all of the clogs that you want. So you don't want to have to take apart the extruder ever. 
um, to, to break in there and take it apart. Um, have you taken it apart yet? Uh, no, no. Okay, cool. So if you ever want to take it apart or you feel like you need to or somebody's like, oh, it's clogged, we need to take it apart, but contact us. And then we'll have you try a couple things. And then if we have to take it apart, um, we can totally walk you through video conferencing. You can bring it by our shop and fix it because your printer is covered by a one-year warranty that literally covers everything. Like if it falls off the table and breaks in half, uh, it's covered by warranty. Um, and we're right here in Fayetteville too. So um, we want to make sure that, that it keeps printing and you stay printing. So if you feel like you need to take it apart or something's seriously not right with it, um, then you'll uh, just click on our website and you go to support and then do support request. And then um, we'll help you out there. And I'll send you the link when we're done with this, too. Okay. So the final troubleshooting thing, uh, the fourth one and the biggest one, has to do with leveling the bill plate. Um, so how do you feel about leveling? Do you think you're pretty good at it, or have you tried it? Or? I've tried, but I'm not good at it, actually. Okay, so let's practice that then. Yeah. Yeah, so go ahead and uh, plug the printer in, and then uh, um, we'll practice it. Because it is definitely the hardest part of actually running the printer itself. I'll go ahead and turn mine on too. Get it turned on? Uh, yes. Okay, awesome. So go ahead and get a piece of paper. Any sort of piece of scrap paper will do. And then we're gonna fold it in half. All right, so now that we've got a piece of paper, this is what we're gonna use for our tension. So the, the tension that we're looking for is if I set this down and I just like put my finger on it and then you drag the paper and you feel it dragging on your finger, okay. that's the kind of tension that you want. So you wanna feel it dragging and vibrating as you move it back and forth, just like if you had your finger um, on the paper like that and you're pushing on it. So to get to that tension, we're gonna go ahead and tap on the button. And then we're gonna... I can hear you very well right now. Oh, on the, on the button on the printer. Okay. Go ahead and tap the button. And then go to where it says setup. And then auto home. And then the printer will zero itself out. And then that's why we moved that clip over so it wouldn't be in the way. And then when it stops moving, let me know. Uh, it did. Did it stop? Okay, awesome. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the button again and then go back to setup and then tap disable motors. And that will allow us to move this back and forth and this back and forth. And we don't wanna move the Z, we don't wanna move it up and down and we don't wanna pick this up. We only wanna move the plate and the nozzle. Those are the only two things that we are going to adjust. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this folded sheet of paper above each one of the four bolts in each one of the corners. And we're gonna test the tension of it to where it's dragging on the paper. And that's the part where it's kind of tricky to see where the best dragging point is. Um, so go ahead and move your nozzle to that front corner above this bolt right here. And then we're gonna slide our paper in between it. And if it doesn't fit, you can actually push down on the plate and then get it underneath there. So it'll be like that. You got it? Okay, awesome. So then now, we're gonna go ahead and move that paper when it's underneath there. Do you feel it dragging? I do, yeah. Is it dragging a lot or just barely? Uh, actually, it's a little too much, I think. It feels like. So you wanna feel it dragging to where, like, right before the paper would start to buckle. Okay. So pretty tight. So do you think it's pretty tight? It's a little loose. Okay, so you can go ahead and adjust the bolt then. So if you loosen this bolt, it's gonna push up the plate and make it tighter. And if you tighten this bolt, it's gonna pull it down and make it looser. So when you turn it clockwise, it goes up, and counterclockwise goes 
down. So I'm going to go ahead and turn mine a little bit clockwise. So a little bit looser, so it gets tighter on top. There we go. Now I feel it dragging on the paper, right before it starts to buckle. Think you got it good? Yeah, I think I am. Awesome. So then now move this to this corner and do the same thing. And you're looking to try to get the same tension in this corner that you have in this corner. Okay. That's the trick, is to try to get it a consistent uh, tension all the way around. So then we'll try to move this a little bit. So this one's a little bit loose, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it a little bit more. There we go. So I turned it a little bit this way, a little bit counterclockwise, until I feel it dragging. And the trick is real tiny increments. So turn it a tiny bit and then test it. Right, okay. and then a tiny bit and then test it. Think you got it? Uh, yeah. Great. And then now let's do the other two corners. So this back corner right here, until it feels about the same. So a tiny increment, go a little bit tighter, a little bit looser on the bottom so it gets tighter on top, a little bit more. Oh, just a tiny bit more. There we go. Perfect. So we feel the same amount of tension. Okay. I think I got this one too. Sweet. And then now go ahead and move it over to this corner and then do the same thing for this corner. So turn this one a tiny bit, make it a tiny looser, and then a tiny bit more. Just a tiny bit more. Oh, so close. Tiny bit more. Just a tiny bit. There we go. Perfect. And you want to feel it dragging and vibrating on the paper. I'm pretty close. Okay. Think you got it? I think that sounds good. Yeah. So go ahead and pull the paper out. And then now we're going to go ahead and print a test print and watch it. Because what you can also do with this is to do what's called hot leveling. So what you're looking for is a 90 degree angle of filament coming out of the nozzle. So as the nozzle is moving, you want to see the filament coming out in a straight line and it's stuck really well to the bill plate. So if it's too loose, it's gonna come out kind of stringy and it won't really stick very well. It might be a big bubble that's kind of on there um, or it might not stick at all and just turn into a giant pile of spaghetti. I mean, it might knock the model loose. It'll cause the build to warp up and stuff like that. All of those are issues from the bill plate being too far away from the novel. And if it's too close, then that's where it digs into it and can dig into your model itself and like dig trenches in your model. It can dig into the bill tack surface and kind of dent that up and, and mark that up a little bit, or it can actually cement the model to the build surface if it's too close. And, it, and as I mentioned before, if it cements your model to where it's really hard for you get, to get your model off, um, or there's some bits of plastic that are like stuck on there and things like that, go ahead and loosen each one of them. Um, so go ahead and, and turn it clockwise, like a fourth of a turn, all the way around, and then print your model again, and only let it print like the first layer or so, and then go ahead and stop your print and then peel off that first layer. And when you peel off that first layer, that'll peel off the cemented stuff that's stuck to your bill plate. And then you can clean it off with some 90% alcohol or some acetone on a rag or something like that uh, and clear it off. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and print a test print and then watch it and make sure that it's printing um, correctly for those first couple layers. So um, go ahead and make sure there's an SD card in the printer. You might want to take the one that like you used on your computer, maybe. Yeah. But if there's one in there, then it might have the test prints on it. I think. So go like print from SD and then scroll down to where it says test prints. Do you see it? Uh, the second turn. It's fine. Yeah, and uh, if you put the SD card in while it's on, you'll have to go to refresh SD card and tap that before you can access what's on the SD card. It just kind of like refreshes everything that's on there. I think there's something so I can do this. It's cool. Does it look like there's one in there? Uh, it looks like it's a broken one, actually. It's broken? What do you mean? Uh-oh. There's the card, yeah, somebody broke it in here. Like it's in the SD card slot or not? Uh, sorry? Like is there an SD card in the SD card slot? Uh, 
Yeah, it's like a half of it, actually. Oh, it might be in the wrong way then. So go ahead and flip the SD card out and then try to put it in there. Because it'll only go in one way and it'll click in and click out. Otherwise, it won't go in there very well. Can you pull it out? Did I get it? Nope, it doesn't. You're right. Did that work? Did it click in there? No, it just it goes halfway in there and it doesn't all go in. I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. It, uh, it goes halfway there and it doesn't go all the way in actually. So, can you show me? Can you get close enough to show me? I don't know if you can see actually from here. See? Can you pull it out? Now flip the SD card over and then try to put it in. Oh, yeah, yeah, I tried. Because it should only go in there one way and then it'll click to get in there. Doesn't go in that way either? Nope, it doesn't. I feel like there's something in there or it's never done that before. It was never a problem. Yeah, you can take a picture of it. That's a good idea. <laughs> And then show me. <laughs> Does it look like there's something in there? Um, it's really hard to tell, actually. So you tried the SD card both ways, and it wouldn't go in there? Yeah, it wouldn't go in there. And it's weird, because, uh, well. I can't see anything, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, you can't really tell if there's anything in there or not. Does it go in like sideways or what happens when you try to put it in there? Uh, you know how it usually just goes in there? Yeah. Uh, just go halfway there now. It doesn't go all the way. Hmm. I'm so sorry, man. No, it's okay. We gotta figure out what's wrong with it. And what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna jam anything in there either because it can actually bend the pins that are inside of there. And that might be what's happened. There might be like a bent pan or something. And that's why it's hard for it to push in there. Uh, in here? Yeah. Try another SD card. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find it. So we can print with USB if we have to. Um, and then you can just bring that by the shop and next time you guys are in Fayetteville. Uh, we can print by what? USB, you said? Yes. Oh, we can go down here, right? Uh, yeah, if we have to, yeah. But let's try first to see if we can get that SD card slot figured out. Okay. So if you find another SD card, we'll try that. I don't really have my stuff in here, actually. Nope, I'm not finding one. I'm sorry. That's okay. So when you put the other one in there, 
is it is it pushing in like straight or does it going in like at an angle or does it only go like halfway in straight it goes like straight halfway in and it doesn't go anymore and okay. if you keep pushing it feels like there's something in there so and you tried like both both ways right both ways yeah i did yes yeah. um go ahead and and like hold it on its side like this and then hit it you can hit it pretty hard. Uh, maybe with something like particle or something in there. I don't know. Do you have a uh, compressed air? You have what? Like compressed air in a can? I don't have any. Okay. See maybe if that helped and see if it'll click in there now. Still doesn't go in there? Nope. And you are going into the slot, not underneath the slot or above the slot, but into the slot itself. Because sometimes the hole can be a little bit larger than the slot itself. Nope, it doesn't go in there now either. Hmm. Can, you, can you show me how far in it goes? Uh, let me take a picture. Yeah, you can take a picture of it. That'll work. Okay, uh, can I ask my supervisor if she does have another SD card in there? And we can try with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you want to. I don't know if it's the SD card, though. It might be the slot. She didn't have one either. Okay, where, what? Didn't have one? No, she didn't. And I, where, where did I leave the one I already had? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, that's all right. 3D printing is all about troubleshooting. Can you, uh, yeah, once you find it, just. If you can uh, put it in there and then send me a picture of how far in it goes. Yeah, I will. Definitely with it. Oh, gosh. Is it, is it in there now? No? No, it's not. I wish it was, though. Where the hell did I put it? <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> okay. Did you carry it into Diane's office? Uh, did I what? Did you carry it into Diane's office? I don't remember. Okay. But I can't put anything down there, so... Oh, gosh. Okay, I found it. Wait. Huh, weird. 
Yeah. So flip it over, like, upside down the other way so the Toshiba's on the bottom and see if it does the same thing. Does it go in the same distance? Uh, yeah. It's like kind of says in the name. Pretty much the same, but it's a little tilted. I don't know if you can really see. Yeah, so that's the upside down. So does it have the same exact shape as this one? Yes. We don't, we don't sell Toshiba ones, so. Yeah, it's the one we use over here. Okay, so it's got the same little notch and everything? Yep, yeah, that's the same. Okay, to make sure it's the same one. Because I was thinking it might be the wrong size, like micro SD card that might fit in there. Uh, probably if some... I mean, I've used it before in here, so it's pretty okay. much something that in there. I guess we'll put it in later. Um, so we can do two things. We can somehow get uh, the printer to look at it. If you can get it to, like, are you going to be in Fayetteville? Do you know if anybody's going to be in Fayetteville anytime soon? Uh, in Fayetteville? I live in Fayetteville, so. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. if you, if you want to bring that by our shop and drop it off. Okay. Yeah, I um, can. Then we can check it out. Okay, yeah. When, when are you guys open? Um, we're open till like 7 every day. So if you wanted to come by like when your finals are over or something on like Wednesday or whatever, we'd be here. Okay. Um, and then, because that's what I would suggest is just bringing that by since we're in town and we can check it out. And then we'll make sure that the SD card reader is all going on it. Will that work for you? Uh, yeah, it works for me. Uh, do I have to make an appointment or just show up? Just show up. Yeah, you know, just let me know when, like, when, what day would be good for you to come by. I think Wednesday, because my finals are all done on Tuesday, so Wednesday I'll be free. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to do this, take it home with you, and then just come drop it off um, at our place. Um, and we only need the box, though. We don't need the whole printer. Um, so you can just disconnect all the wires, and then just bring the box itself. Um, okay. Because yeah, we don't need this part, because this part's fine. So, uh, And then we'll check it out and see like what might be stuck in there and see if we can, we can get okay. you. So. I'm so sorry about that. No, it's okay. Yeah, but otherwise, I think, um, do you think you have a pretty good handle of everything that's going on? I mean, yeah, I was, uh, I had a little trouble. It took me very long for, to calibrate it, but at the end, I still kind of got it, so it was not a problem after that. So. Okay. Do you have any questions about anything that we went over? Um, I got all distracted now, so I forgot everything, but... No, it's okay. I don't think so, no. And if you want, we can plug it into a computer and, and print from USB if you want to try to do that today. Um, uh, okay, I guess we can do that, but I don't to, have but a login to any of the computers in here. Oh, okay. So yeah, I can still print Cura to... We need to install another oper uh, program too. It's like a newer version of Cura to be able to print from SD. Uh, to, to, I mean, to be able to print with USB, we have to install a different version of Cura, so. Okay. Um, but we can show you that when you come to the shop. Okay. Okay, then. That'll work. Okay, sweet. Yeah, we'll just plan on seeing you Wednesday then. Um, and then we might be able to check it out like while you're here, but we'll just plan on you just dropping it off and then um, coming and picking it up when it's ready. Um, okay. That'd probably be the easiest thing to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you guys have any, uh, like, uh, printing in progress when I get there, that will be great to just look at it, actually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we've got um, all kinds of stuff that are going on here. And, um, and you can hang out for a little, depends how much time you got. Um, you can hang out for a little bit and we can try to figure out what's going on. Um, and it might, might be something we can fix quickly, but if it's not, then we'll, uh, um, then you can just leave it here and then come back and get it. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. We'll just turn to you Wednesday then. Prepared today. I'm sorry. Oh, no. No, you're totally fine. Yeah. Trust me, I've done a lot of these trainings and, um, this wasn't this wasn't bad at all. <laughs> yeah, it's no big deal. Things happen. Yeah, so it's it's no big deal. And good luck on your finals too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll see you later. And uh, and I'll send you these links and stuff, and then we'll plan on seeing you um, with the box here in a couple days at the shop. Okay. Great. All right. See you later, Ronaldo. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah.